I'm sure if you've read the news recently, you saw an article about uh, the death of a zookeeper a few weeks back in uh, England. And I want to read um, part of the article that uh, details uh, what happened to this lady. Uh, Rosa King, a zookeeper at Hammerton Zoo Park, 80 miles north of London, had gotten trapped in the land of the tiger enclosure with at least one of the zoo's big cats, according to local police and the zoo. The zoo called King's death a freak accident involving a woman who had been a keeper at the zoo for 14 years. Authorities <clears throat> in the zoo have not detailed how King and the tiger came to be in the same space at the same time. Her parents said she was best summed up by the statement, when I look into the eyes of an animal, I do not see an animal. I see a living being, I see a friend, I feel a soul. <clears throat> now, this was a tragic and just a horrifying death, especially for somebody that you know has devoted their whole life to helping and caring for animals, but you know, becoming complacent because of maybe familiarity or maybe personification of animals doesn't change the nature of savage beasts and even maybe especially beasts kept in cages. We know whales, for instance, kind of turn. They don't do well in a caged environment and a lot of animals don't either. Those savage natures that can be studied and maybe understood become even maybe more uh, random once you cage an animal, even of that kind of a, a beast. Well, you know, the zoo called this a freak accident. You know, it was some aberration. It was a deviation of the normal course of action, a normal daily activities that happen within this zoo. And this little deviation, this freak accident, caused a woman's death. Brethren, you know, we too enter a lion's cage every day that we submit to God and not to this world. And we walk through our own valleys of the shadow of death surrounding us daily because we have given, or because God has given his spirit to us. Because God gave his spirit to mankind so many centuries ago on this day. And anybody that carries around that spirit, anybody that walks with that understanding, anybody that shines with that light, is spiritual prey to Satan. You know, God's spirit attracts that roaring lion, that caged beast. But God's spirit also gives us strength to stand against that beast, to repel him, just like God's Spirit did for King David. Let's begin in <clears throat> Psalm 23. Read a little bit. That same section where we read about that the uh, the valley. Psalm 23, and in verse four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. But you know, when God's people have become devoured by this world, have become overtaken by all that Satan has put out there as bait, it's for the same reason that that zookeeper lost her life. A deviation from righteousness, going against what we know in a small part from what we have, what maybe have become standard in our lives, just small little changes to our spiritual walk. Our choice, and it is our choice, to ignore God. Doing that, no matter how insignificant it might seem, that kind of choice will always lead us away from God and will uh, result in our tragic spiritual death, eternal death. Not being given that eternal reward by God because of what might be something small, some, might be something that we had not planned because we became complacent. Because we stopped seeing Satan for what he is, 
almost the reverse of personification. We stopped seeing Satan for what he was or what he is and saw him maybe more as the world sees him, as a shining light, as a minister of light. Proverbs 1 Proverbs 1 and verse 28. Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. And that's our choice, brethren. We choose to fear the Lord. And in verse 30, they would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. Losing our godliness through complacency, like I said, can end in our spiritual death. But if we take heed to God, we don't have to worry about that line. As we finish up this part in verse 33, but whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil, without fear of that lion that we all walk around or that prowls around us looking for some weakness. We don't have to fear him if we are staying true to our path, if we're not becoming complacent in this great gift that we have been given through God's Holy Spirit. We'll re read that same plea in Proverbs 8. For what we should be doing. Proverbs 8 and verse 32. Now therefore listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways, hear instruction and be wise, and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors, Whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. You know, if you take the time to listen to worthwhile counsel today, and they don't hear the approach of that predator that seeks to destroy all of mankind. You know, we are clearly warned in Proverbs 19.27 to cease listening to instruction, or cease listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. If we stop listening to this instruction that we have been given by God, we are going to stray from this knowledge, without doubt. You know, we cannot afford to walk away from this, to be complacent for any amount of time, especially, especially in these end times, as we see Satan is becoming more voracious, as Satan is going around and stirring up with his ministers of light, doing even more to wreck and to wreak, wreak havoc against God's plan. You know, brethren, his word, God's word, is the key that will unlock the confinement we have, we are part of in this world. And it will keep us from the one who would destroy us.